Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Fariya Saleem and today we are going to talk about action potential. Okay, let's first talk about that how neurons communicate with each other. So basically neurons communicate by means of an electrical signal. Obviously there is a need for two different or many different neurons to communicate with each other. Otherwise signals would not pass. Action potentials are based on the movement of ions between the outside and inside of exon. So basically the movement of ions outside and inside the exon causes the action potential. When an action potential occurs, molecular message is sent to the neighboring neuron. Action potential is either all or none process like a gunfire. So let's study how this potential is generated. To understand action potential, it is important to understand how the potential is maintained across the membrane. Okay, so uh, this is basically you can see that this is ECF extracellular fluid and this is ICF intracellular fluid or inside the cell. This part is inside the cell and this other part is outside the cell. As you can see that there are three types of channels. The first one is potassi potassium channel, second one is sodium ion channels and third one is chloride channels. You can see that through these three different channels potassium, sodium and chloride ions are simultaneously passing either inside or outside. So at, at polarization state at the polarization state you can see that there is more negative charge on inside the cell as compared to positive charge on the outside the cell why is it so it is because of more negative charge ions are present inside the cell as compared to outside so remember that when there is more negatively charged inside as compared to outside it is called as polarization Okay, what is membrane resting potential? Potential across the membrane is called as membrane potential. Inside the cell, the concentration of potassium ions and organic compound is more than outside. That is why it is called as negatively charged. While outside the cell, there are more positive ions. So that is why it is positively charged at normal state. There are certain sodium open channels, which are also called as sodium leaky channels, potassium leaky channels, and sodium potassium pump. As the name indicates, sodium channel allow the passage of sodium ions, potassium channel allow the flow of potassium ions and sodium potassium pumps allows the movement of 3 sodium out and 2 potassium in. As you can see over here, 3 sodium are moving out and 2 potassium are moving inwards. So, the sodium potassium pump causes movement of three sodium ions out and two potassium ions inside. Okay, all the above channels and pump maintains the resting potential across the membrane that is minus 70 millivolts. At resting stage, the potential or voltage across the cell membrane is minus 70 millivolts. Remember this value. Okay. So what is depolarization? Depolarization is that when the sodium channels are open, these are the sodium channels, they are open and you can see that the potassium channels are closed. So more sodium is going inside and obviously when more positive ion will move inside the cell it will cause a positivity inside the cell as compared to outside so outside the cell will become negatively charged and inside would become positively charged this is called as depolarization so let me revise firstly we talked about polarization in which uh, in which there was more negatively charged inside as compared to outside because more negative charge ions were present inside the cell when inside becomes more positively charged this is called as depolarization and it is because of opening of the sodium channels okay let's revise it 
as the potential strike minus 55 millivolt and now let me recall that at polarization state it was voltage was minus 70 millivolts now as most more positive ions have moved inside this voltage have increased to minus 55 millivolts at this stage sodium channels uh, sodium ion voltage gated channels are open and allow the influx of sodium ions and due to this the potential across the membrane increases more increase in potential causes more influx of ions it is basically a vicious cycle and this leads to change in charge across the membrane inside it is more positive charge as compared to outside okay this voltage from minus 55 millivolt will keep on increasing till it reaches plus 40 millivolts which is called as overshoot the sodium voltage gated channel closes and the potassium gated channels they open up okay after this plus 40 millivolt has reached the sodium voltage gated channels will now close and potassium channels will open up and this will lead to repolarization let's visualize it how it happens okay so you can see that this was the sodium channel and this has been closed by a protein and this is potassium channel and this is still open and this is causing efflux of the potassium ion which means that potassium ions are moving outside obviously when a positive charge is moving outside it will cause negativity inside and positivity outside and this is called as repolarization now you remember that in polarization this was the same almost the same scenario that there was more negatively charged uh, more negative charge inside as compared to outside while in depolarization it was reversed and now in repolarization again it is the same scenario with more negative charge inside okay so uh, what is hyperpolarization and refractory period okay the refractory period and the exon they cannot in the refractory period basically the exon cannot fire again until it returns to its resting potential so obviously if the exon would keep on firing without a proper pattern it would get exhausted so there is a refractory period in which exons do not fire until the potential comes back to the resting potential okay and it normally lasts for 3 to 5 milliseconds okay as the resting potential is restored via open channels and sodium potassium pump now the new action potential is fired each spike is followed by a refractory period okay so there are basically two refractory periods there is an absolute refractory period and there is a relative refractory period in absolute refractory period it is impossible to evoke another action potential during spike and right after it no type of stimulus can cause another action potential in absolute refractory period then there comes a relative refractory period in which a stronger than usual stimulus is required to evoke an action potential it means that if a stronger stimulus comes it might start an action potential okay so this is basically a graphical representation of the absolute refractory period this is the ref, ref, uh, relative refractory period which is immediately after the absolute refractory period the cells basically generate an action potential but only if it is depolarized to a value more positive than the normal threshold this is true because some sodium channels are still inactive and some potassium channels are still open this is called as relative refractory period okay in this scenario the cell has to be depolarized to a more positive membrane potential than normal threshold to open the sodium channels that means that more than normal stimulus is required to generate an action potential okay so now comes the all or none principle throughout the depolarization the sodium ions they continue to rush inside until the action potential reaches reaches its peak and the sodium gates close if the potential cross the minus 55 millivolt range then the action potential will reach to its fate that is through repolarization and hyperpolarization 
if the depolarization is not great enough to reach threshold then the action potential and hence an impulse are not produced basically threshold is required for an action potential to be generated if the threshold is not reached no action potential will be generated this is called as all or none principle either an action potential will occur or it won't okay so you can see firstly there is a voltage of minus 70 millivolt okay then sodium channel opens sodium channels are open and this leads to depolarization okay and depolarization the voltage may reach to plus 30 or plus 40 millivolt now the sodium gate channel close and the potassium channels open when the potassium channel open more potassium will move outside and inside the cell would become more negatively charged this will cause a reduction in the millivolt or voltage this would lead to repolarization and sometimes the repolarization or inside the cell becomes more negatively charged and this leads to hyperpolarization in this the voltage may lead reaches to minus 90 millivolt okay and after hyperpolarization again the resting potential is achieved do draw this graph in your copies and practice it because it is really important okay again let's see this uh, there was this threshold value which causes the potential to spike to minus 55 millivolt okay and this is basically the overshoot when the potential reaches more than 0 millivolt up to plus 30 or plus 40 this is called as overshoot this is again uh, an animation representing the action potential firstly there is rising phase of the action potential then the depolarization then the repolarization state okay so now we will talk about i'm skipping all those steps which are not important or which are not given in your uh, book we will skip those things okay now come to the action potential propagation this is again a repetition uh, first of all a threshold is reached then the sodium ions enter beginning of the exon at the beginning of the exon the sodium ions they begin entering this triggers the next sodium gates to open up as they open and allow sodium ions then the previous gate begins to close okay before the action potential has reached the end the beginning of the exon is back at the resting potential and ready for another firing okay always remember that in case of these neurons the firing is saltatory now what is saltatory conduction as you can remember that on the exon there are certain nodes and these nodes are called as nodes of Ranvier now the impulse passes basically it jumps from one node to another node then another node then another node this speeds up the conduction of the impulse and this is called as saltatory conduction remember that okay so there is graded potential uh, which is a change in membrane potential relative to the resting potential okay this is another animation representing the action potential on the exon okay let's compare the graded potential and action potential graded potential basically originates in the dendrites and cell bodies while the action potential generate in the exon okay the type of channels in graded potential are chemical mechanical or light and the action potential has voltage gated ion channels the conduction in graded potential is not propagated it is localized thus it permits communication over a very few millimeter area while the action potential is propagated thus permit communication over long distance like i just told you 
that in action potential the axons have certain nodes of Ranvier and the impulse jumps from one node to another node and this not only speeds up the reaction but also it is very efficient okay the duration is longer in case of greater potential while the action potential is shorter in range that is 0.5 to 2 milliseconds okay refractive period is not present in greater potential while action potential does have uh, the refractive period and as you can remember that in refractive period it is basically a silent period okay in which no action potential is being generated and it is it was uh, I can repeat it again that it was of two types and absolute refractive period and relative refractive period I hope today's lecture is clear with you people do draw that graph I told you about and practice it in your copies thank you